All right, this is part one of NIST Special Publication 80207, Zero Trust Architecture. The goal of this video series will be to create a sort of TLDR, you know, too long, didn't read, or maybe create a bit of an audiobook kind of experience for people um, who are interested in this. So quickly, the authors are Scott Rose, Oliver Borchert, uh, Stu Mitchell, and Sean Connolly. That's not Sean Connery, you know, the great actor. And this is available for free online. You can go here, or obviously you could look at this URL to see um, where the source of where I'm reading from. Looks like it's coming from the Department of Commerce. A lot of these publications are pretty routine, so I'm going to skip through plenty of this. And most of the time, the way I do that is by just reading the first sentence of a, a large chunk of text. Like this says, the publication has been developed by NIST in accordance with its statutory responsibilities. And if you don't know what FISMA is, you must be living under a rock. If you have comments on this publication, you can submit them here. And that might be really cool to uh, for me to try to remember, because what if throughout all this reading, um, I have something I can say to them. Okay, so reports on computer systems technology, the Information Technology Laboratory, IDLE, at the National Institute of Standards and Technology promotes the U.S. economy and public welfare by providing technical leadership for the nation's measurement and standards infrastructure. So that's all I'll read there. This abstract, though, I'll have to read in its entirety. Zero trust is the term for an evolving set of cybersecurity paradigms that move defenses from static network-based parameters to focus on users, assets, and resources. A zero-trust architecture uses zero-trust principles to plan industrial and enterprise infrastructure and workflows. Zero-trust assumes there is no implicit trust granted to asset or assets or user accounts based solely on their physical or network location. So to take a note, here is that um, just summarized. So you don't get trust based on your location or based on asset ownership, enterprise or personally owned, authentication and authorization, authorization, both subject and device, are discrete functions performed before a session to an enterprise resource before an enterprise resource is established. Zero trust is a response to enterprise network trends that include remote users, uh, bring your own device and cloud-based assets that are not located within an enterprise-owned uh, network boundary. Zero Trust focuses on protecting resources, that's assets, services, workflows, network accounts, etc., not network segments, as the network location is no longer seen as the prime component to the security posture of the, of the resource. So the question is, what types of resources will uh, ZT protect? We have a long list here. I'm just going to choose a few that really make sense to me. So Zero Trust will protect services, network accounts, and I'm going to put assets because I think applications might um, fall under that term of assets. So I'm going to put applications question mark right there. Okay, so this document contains an abstract definition of zero trust architecture and gives general deployment models and use cases where zero trust could improve an enterprise's, enterprise's overall information technology security posture. So here's some keywords, acknowledgements, the audience, trademark information, patent disclosure. Yep, looks like something worth um, skipping. And zero, a table of contents, and there's quite a bit here, but... I think we should just try to dive in. Here's our introduction. A typical enterprise's infrastructure has grown increasingly complex. A single enterprise may operate several internal networks, remote offices with their local, okay, real vanilla introduction. Forgive me, I'm moving pretty fast here because it's a long document. Okay, here we are. So a ZT approach is primarily focused on data and service protection, but can and should be expanded to include all enterprise assets that is to say, devices, infrastructure components. Yay, applications, just like I was wanting. And then they add virtual and cloud components. And then subjects. Okay, before we break down subjects, let's take a note. Okay, so the question is, what are some other examples of assets? A simple answer there. I am really interested in the uh, virtual and cloud components. So sure, if you're running VMs, got to protect those. 
or maybe cloud components. I wonder how that works, so I'm looking forward to reading about it. Now in terms of subjects, we have protecting end users, applications again, and other non-human entities that request information from resources. Okay, so the big two things is they're trying to protect assets and subjects. Throughout this document, subject will be used unless the section relates directly to a human end user, in which user will be specifically used instead of the more generic uh, subject. Zero trust security models assume that an attacker is present in the environment and that an enterprise owned environment is no different or no more trustworthy than any non enterprise owned environment. So they're like so environment agnostic might be a good term to use. In other words, they're just assuming they don't know your real environment. So they're just going to uh, not use the environment to play a role in this whole zero trust uh, infrastructure. No, they said architecture. So in this new paradigm, an enterprise must assume no implicit trust and continually analyze and evaluate the risks to its assets and business functions, and then enact protections to mitigate these risks. In Zero Trust, these protections usually involve minimizing access to resources, such as data and compute resources and applications services, to only those subjects and assets identified as needing access as well as continually authenticating and authorizing the identity and security posture of each asset request. So yeah, I know it's annoying, but to continually authenticate, that's, uh, that's a good thing. How good of a thing it is, uh, I, I might need the actual uh, situation to determine that. A zero trust architecture is an enterprise cybersecurity architecture that is based on zero trust principles and designed to prevent data breaches and limit internal lateral movement. This publication discusses ETA, its logical components, uh, possible deployment scenarios, and threats. It also presents a general roadmap for organizations wishing to mitigate, migrate, sorry, to a zero trust design approach and discuss relevant federal policies that may impact or influence zero trust architecture. So I really like the first part. Here is what it's trying to stop. Okay, so ZT is not a single architecture, but a set of guiding principles for workflow, system design, that's a good one, and operations that can be used to improve the security posture classification of any classification or sensitivity level. And I guess this is relating to FIPS 9199. So the question I'm asking in my notes here, um, the principles can guide what? Maybe I should say these principles can guide what? All right, so my answer, um, because I love system design so much, I threw that in, but also operations. And a question I don't know the answer to right now, but we'll try to find out later, is what's inside that FIPS 199. That's not one that I know off the top of my head. Here they say transitioning to ZTA is a journey considering concerning how an organization evaluates risk in its mission and cannot simply be accomplished with a wholesale replacement of technology. That said, many organizations already have elements of a ZTA in their enterprise infrastructure today. Organizations should seek to incrementally implement zero trust principles, process changes, and technology solutions that protect their data assets and business functions by use case. Most enterprise infrastructures will operate in a hybrid zero trust per perimeter based mode while continuing to invest in IT modernization initiatives and improve organization business process. Baby steps. Maybe that's the TODR <laughs> for that last paragraph. And as I start to read this one, it's offering no specific new information. So uh, let's go here briefly to go over the history of zero trust efforts related to federal agency. The Defense Information Systems Agency, DISA, and the Department of Defense published their work on a more secure enterprise strategy dubbed a Black Core. Black Core involved moving from a perimeter-based security model to one that focused on the security of individual transactions. The work of the Jericho Forum in 2004 publicized the idea of deperimeterization, that is limiting implicit trust based on network location and the limitations relying on single static defenses over a large network uh, segment. Jericho. All right, and then the rest of this paragraph talks about the evolution of ZT, 
Looks like this is a good idea, not just for DOD, but private industry and higher education. If you've made your way to this video, you probably have heard of FISMA. Also, risk management framework, nothing new. But for me, at least, I, I haven't heard of Federal Identity Credential and Access Management, FECAM, nor um, do I know about Trusted Internet Connections, TIC. But Continuous Diagnostics and Mitigation, CDM, that does sound familiar. Either way, let me write those out as like to-dos. The syntax of my notes probably look crazy to you guys. The syntax of my notes probably look crazy, but it works for me. So whatever these are, FECAM, TIC, and CDM, all of these programs aim to restrict data and resource access to authorized... <laughs> it aims to restrict data and resource access to authorized parties? All right, and then the rest of this paragraph just says, because technology has evolved, we don't have to rely on things like uh, large choke points. Um, the paragraph basically just says, technology is better now, so we can have better security. Here's the structure of the document. You can pause or read on your own. Um, what I'll do here is stop for this video. Keep it very nice and short, right? And so in, the, in part two, I'll start here. A zero trust basics.